For this video, what I want to do is show you how to run a one proportion z-test using a rejection region decision rule. Okay, so what we have is a medical researcher claims that less than 25% of U.S. adults are smokers. In a random sample of 500 U.S. adults, 19.8% reply that they are smokers. At alpha equals 0.05, is there enough evidence to support the claim? So I know I told you which type of test we were going to be running, but I also want to go over how I know to use that kind of test. So the first thing that needs to trigger that I'm going to use a test for proportions is the fact that my claim is a percent or a proportion of the population. So we're saying a percent of US adults, of US adults are smokers. So since we have that, so since we are using um, a proportion as our claim, that's going to lead to using a proportion test. We have a one proportion Z test and we have a two proportion Z test. And we saw that we only had one random sample, so we're not trying to compare two samples together. Okay, you would use a two proportion Z test if you were trying to compare um, two proportions. All right, so before you start your hypothesis test, it's always important to make sure that conditions are met in order to use that. One of the things that we always look for is that we do have a random sample from the population that we are talking about. So we have a random sample of U.S. adults. And different textbooks have different conditions. So I'm going over the ones that I'm currently teaching to my students. Um, there are other alternatives, so make sure that you look at your textbook that, to see that, I, that you have everything. Okay, the other one that's extremely important is n times p has to be greater than or equal to 5, and n times q has to be greater than or equal to 5. This is the condition that must be met in order for the central limit theorem to kick in, and the central limit theorem has to do with the sampling distribution of the sample proportions, or the sample means, in this case, we'd be talking about the sample proportions. Basically, with the central limit theorem, what's going to happen is that the sampling distribution of the sample proportions will start to look like a normal curve, and you can use a normal curve to approximate, but in order for that to happen, this has to be true. Okay, so in order to find this one, we do need to find our n, which is 500. Okay, we do have to find p, which always comes from the claim, and we write it as a decimal, and then q always comes from 1 minus p, so we would have 0.75. Okay, so if I plug these values in, I would have 500 times 0.25, which is 125, which is greater than or equal to 5. And if I take my n 500 times 0.75, I get 375, which is also greater than or equal to 5. It's really important that you actually show this out and just don't write it down. The only way that your teacher or professor can assess that you checked them is if you write them down. Okay, so the next step is to identify the name of the test. Just go ahead and write it down. So we can say that since the conditions are met, we can use the one proportion Z test. Okay, and like I said, always reference the conditions that are used. I know that there's different texts that use different conditions. Okay, and then our next step after you have established which test you're using is setting up the null in the alternative hypotheses. Okay, the null in the alternative always come from our claim. And so we can see that it says that less than 25%. So we would do 0.25. And the parameter that we use for the population proportion is P. Some texts will use pi, so just know your text. All right, so P is less than 0.25. Since that is a statement of inequality, it will go in the alternative. If it's a statement of equality, then it goes in the null. And I'm going to go ahead and establish that this is my claim. That way, um, when I go to interpret my decision, I know the correct um, word usage. Okay, we interpret it differently if the claim is about the null than we do if it's about the alternative.
Okay, so the null is just the complement, and some texts will just put that p equals 0.25. Both of them are acceptable, it's just a matter of preference. Okay, and then for this, we always look at the alternative to determine the tail of the test that we will be shading. So this is a left tail test, which means that when I draw my model, I am going to shade the left tail. Less than always means down here. Greater than always is to the right. Okay. So since I am using a rejection region decision rule, I am going to shade alpha. So I need to go back up into my problem and find what alpha is. So we can see that alpha is 0 0.05. And we also need to know our p hat, which is 19.8%. So alpha is 0 0.05 and p hat is 0.198. Always write it as a decimal. You don't need q hat, so don't bother finding it. Okay, the formula uses P and Q in the denominator. So when we go to calculate Z, we will do P hat minus P over P times Q divided by N. All right, so our next step is shading our model. So when we go to shade our model, like I said, we're going to shade the left tail and we are going to approximately shade what alpha is equal to. Okay, so this is alpha equals 0 0.05, and we are setting up our rejection region. Basically, if our results that we get for Z fall in the rejection region, then we will reject the null hypothesis. If it does not fall in the shaded area, then we will fail to reject. Okay, so we have to go into our table and find our Z naught value, or your, um, your text may label it as Z star instead of Z naught. Okay, so there's two different ways that I've seen in textbooks that it labels the critical values. And then I'm going to use a T table to help us find this. The T table also gives us our Z scores on the very bottom row. Okay, if you were dealing with a T test or a T um, distribution, then you would have to find your degrees of freedom. That does not apply to Z. So with this one, our alpha, we're running a one tail test, 0 0.05, and then we're going to go to the very bottom row. The 1.645, the infinity row, is always going to be your Z scores. Okay, so I'm going to put down that this is negative 1.645. So when I plug into my calculator, my values, if it falls to the left of negative 1.645, we'll reject. If not, we fail to reject. So let's go ahead and show out our work for this. Our p hat is going to be 0.198 minus our p, which is 0.25. And then we would use 0.25 times 0.75 divided by 500. So in the denominator, make sure that you are using P and Q and not P hat and Q hat. I know in one proportion Z intervals, you use P hat and Q hat, so it does change for the one proportion Z intervals. All right, so I did wanna show you how to plug this into a calculator. I'm just gonna use a free calculator online called Desmos, um, desmos.com. They are a great resource if you're not familiar with them. So I'm going to go into the scientific calculator. Okay, and then I'm just going to plug it in. Make sure that you put the p hat, the 0.198 minus, and I used the comma, sorry, I couldn't see that. Let me use my 0.198 minus 0.25. And then we would just close our parentheses, divided by, and I'm going to go to the square root, okay? And since it places it underneath, I don't have to be as careful. If it starts a parentheses, then you do need to be careful about making sure you don't close that parentheses prematurely, okay? So now I would do 0.25 times 0.75 divided by, and I don't like the way that it did this one, so let me 
go back. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in parentheses so it looks exactly how I put it. So 0.25 times 0.75, close the parentheses, divided by, and our sample size is 500. Okay, and then we can see that the answer, the negative 2.685, is our standardized test statistic. So the negative, this is approximately negative 2.685. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the negative 2.685 and see where it falls. And we can see that it is to the left of our z naught. So we're going to say that z is approximately negative 2.69, or I'm going to just go ahead and write 685 because when it's directly in the middle, I don't like to round. Okay. But we can see that it falls in the rejection region. So since this is in the rejection region, Our decision is going to be that we will reject the null hypothesis. So you always either reject the null or fail to reject the null. So our decision that we made is that we reject the null hypothesis. And then the last step is interpreting the decision. So the last step is to interpret, and this is the most important part because this is telling what you found. Okay, most people do not understand the mechanics here. So if you start talking about p hats and alpha levels, you're going to confuse a lot of people. Um, I know that because I confuse my students all the time. Um, but when you're interpreting this, you want to make sure that anybody understands what you found. So at 5%, there is enough evidence to reject and sorry let me see what word we are my brain just started going through there since we rejected we use the word there is enough and then we have to go back up and see where our claim is so since our claim is about the alternative we use the word support okay if the claim is about the null then we would have used the word reject so at five percent there is enough evidence to support the claim that less than, and then you just insert the context, 25% of U.S. adults are smokers. Okay. Had you used the p-value decision rule, you would have also arrived at the same decision. So just a quick recap, remember that you need to check conditions. Establish which test you are using, state the null and the alternative hypotheses, find your standardized test statistic. If you're using the rejection region, then you find your critical values to see if your standardized test statistic falls in the rejection region. And then you make your conclusion. If it's in the rejection region, we reject. If not, we fail to reject. And then interpret your decision. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.